Join Route 7 Gaming before the 15th of December to win this amazing Araman figure. Welcome to Route 7 Gaming and this is Painting Orc Freebooters. Welcome to Root Stem Gaming. Right, October. So, I've decided I'm going to paint some orcs. Let the camera auto focus. These are the. What the hell? These are flash gates. Uh, I've partially built them. Uh, I've got some blue tack in the holes, as it were, uh, to make sure that they don't get caught in paint, make it glue in the other parts on easier. I'm going to paint these in a part build so I'm basically going to uh, just airbrush some stuff on now just to try and make it fast and quick and then I'm going to be doing the flesh and then once I've done that I'll then cut the other pieces out I'll prime them and then I'll paint them and then they'll be stuck onto the actual figures sometimes this is actually a lot quicker um, than having to block off everything like you have to do sometimes with airbrushing so I don't mind doing it like this. I might actually keep the boots black. So I might block them off. But uh, it just makes it easy when you're doing some airbrush just to quickly do it in. And then you do it quick and do it quick and do it quick. So first off I'm going to use um, some Rhinox Hide and just base coat the leather patches. basically just going to be angled in from the top uh, just to sort of catch the base edges. After the uh, slight shade finished, I dry brushed it in the same colour uh, just to pick out the uh, um, edges and I've gone over it in Agrax Earth Shade. That's pretty much as good to be the, the leather that's going to be on this. The rest of it now is just going to be painted up. The boot's going to be painted up black and I'm going to pick out all the silver elements uh, on the bottom. Now the black boots, what I've done there is just simply put a little, I painted them black, repainted, I mean majority of it were covered but I repainted them black anyway just in case, um, just just needed one coat and then I just did a little bit of airbrush of dry, uh, Dark Reaper and then a dry brush of Dawnstone over the top and that will just give it just, just a little bit of a boot feel, um, it's, it's quick, it's easy, it's simple, that's the whole point of uh, me doing these videos. They're not supposed to be technical masterpieces, it's just so you can get some good looking figures on the tabletop. And uh, you know, I like the fact that the camera decides it's not going to auto focus anymore. Um, right, so next stage, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the green skin. This is going to be hand painted on. First colour is going to be Calavan Green, that's just to give it a good base. mixed warpstone glow with the Calvin green in the wet palette just so I can start building up the highlights. <laughs> Next 
next I'm going to be adding milk green to the concoction I've already got here um, and that's just going to again just build up some layers I've already applied you can see uh, some additional warpstone glow just to be able to sort of start building it up it's going to be quite a dark skin because uh, I will probably go over it with the A shade as well basically just dry brushed a little bit of the moot green onto the flesh parts just to sort of pick it out and that's pretty much it I'm not really going to be doing much else on this uh, the majority of this front anyway is going to be covered up by the weapon when you're painting like this just always remember that certain bits are going to be covered anyway so sometimes it's, it's not really worth it um, but I'm going to start cracking on now with the uh, metallic parts so on the silver I'm going to start with typhus corrosion I'm basically just going to put this onto because I'm trying to make it into a sort of horrible looking silver uh, you know all mucky and dirty so I'm going to put that on first I'm going to put Martian Iron Earth. I'm going to actually dry brush this on to the areas that have actually been painted silver. So it's going to give it a rusty look. <laughs> So that's dry, I'm going to use, because you can't, you can't really see it with being a dark figure, but I'm actually going to use Necron Compound and dry brush over the top of what I've just done. Um, so it's like an ink, a dry brush and a dry brush. And basically what that will do is uh, uh, that will give the silver, rusted silver effect that I'm after. Done, um, I basically coated a lot of the bullets and shells in Screaming Bell and I've done a lot of the buckles as well after dry brushing the Necron Compound and just lead belcher. These majority of this is going to be covered by a weapon, so a weapon's going to go, sorry, weapon's going to go across there. So you're not going to see a lot of this, so you don't really need to do all that, it's just, it's just easier to get it all painted. Um, so I'm going to actually put some purple on this now, some, oh what do I call it, it's uh, dro uh, Drookey Violet onto the Screaming Bell just to try and give it a more brass look. And that's the kind of brass effect that it does, quite dark, slightly dingy, uh, perfect for orcs. Now I'm not really going to concentrate too much on these now, I'm probably going to just do the basing. Um, so I'll do my usual basing on that and then I'm going to get cracking with the arms and weapons next. So I've done the arms separate and uh, just currently painting up the metal to kind of look like the metal we did on these guys. So this metal I'm going to do slightly differently now because this is going to be coloured. So we're going to do some sponge techniques as we actually start to colour this uh, uh, in. First off I'm going to use a feast in red uh, to colour some of these guys in. So 
dirty, it looks mucky, and it doesn't look clean. Right, I'm going to do a couple more of these. So as you can see, I've dabbed yellow on some, but a blue one here, and I've also painted in all the little extras, like the green, the hands, the belts. All these have just been painted with the base colours, because I'm not going to highlight them until we get on the figure. Um, of course, we've already got the other arms as well, they're still drying. Uh, that have also been painted up. Uh, the cigar arm I'm going to leave off for the moment uh, because of course I need to put his head on first. So you could have gone ahead first but I like to know where the weapon's pointing and what of course the interaction is going to be like between the actual figure and the arm. Um, so I prefer to put the head on second. So I'm going to glue these on, I'm going to highlight them and uh, we can have a look at him then. So now I'm going to start on the heads. Um, what I'm going to do with these is to airbrush them because I'm wanting it to be a more of a smooth green. So I'm going to airbrush the green um, onto these heads and then stick them on the figures. So after a quick airbrushing session, this is kind of where I've got to. There is a nice bit. I am going to put a dry brush over the top and then, of course, stick it down. And once all the green is on the figure, I am just going to then go over it in, uh, I believe it's that camo shade. Oh crap, I've forgotten what it's called. Ha! I'll find it. Uh, there we go. Uh, that'll do. It's quite a dark green. I'm going to go over that, over the actual faces, over the uh, everything else. I'm going to paint everything else on it, of course, hand brush, and then uh, stick them onto the bodies. So as you can see, I managed to put the heads on. Now, <laughs> I'm in a bit of a boob uh, because I had to put the arms on, not realizing that the heads are quite big and you're gonna put the arms around the head. So if you are following this at home, put the heads on first, then put the arms on. It's a hell of a lot easier. So now we've just got to do the back poles um, and we've got to do the shoulder pads. Now the shoulder pads, they're going to be dead easy because they're just rusted metal. So we're just going to follow the same rusted metal technique. Same with the banner poles. Probably stick some colours on like we've already got here. And these should then be complete. So this is the shoulder pads. As I said, just a rusted metal technique. If you want to do different colours on different areas of the shoulder pads, you can do. Um, these, of course, I'm just going to glue on the figures now. I have got the straps. Now the straps are what connect the weapon. Sorry. Uh, the weapon to um, the shoulder pads. So once the shoulder pads are on, I'm going to look at doing those and I'm currently in the process of actually doing the backpacks. Now with the backpacks, I've painted the whole thing. Seems to be one missing, I'll find it in a minute. Put it under there, there we go. I've painted the whole thing at black and then I'm going to cause silver it up, sort of mesh that up as well. And then I'm going to stick the backpacks onto the figures before I actually do all the little gubbins at the back. So all the little skulls and everything else that's on there they're going to be done while they're actually on the figure so i've gone and done the boss poles as it were or whatever poles you want to call them before sticking them on the back of the actual guys i have gone over all the metal parts and sponged some storm horse silver onto them this is just to give the outside edges uh, now giving them a battered look feel that will give the metal, even though it's painted, it gives it a worn look. And yeah, because they are sort of looters, they have got some very clown-like um, colourings. Right, so let's get these boss poles on. These banners, and then we're just going to do the standard painting using techniques we've already learnt in the vid. Uh, just to sort of like finish them off. And once you've done that, you've pretty much got finished orcs. Quite quick, well, quickish simple uh very effective looking good tabletop quality and you should be able to crack through quite a few uh doing that i mean these have got the bigger weapons so i mean some of the smaller guys probably just doing the metal shoulder pads to show allegiance not quite sure because i'm doing this before the actual orc codex comes out but hopefully when the orc codex comes out there might be a bit more painting malarkey to be able to do and of course maybe uh, even more clan stuff because I'm, I'm glad they're bringing back the clans might even get myself a small goth army, you never know. Well, thanks very much for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, hit that notification button to see more. I'm on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Rootstem Gaming. Twitter's uh, Rootstem Multimedia. 
Uh, Facebook is Rootstem Multimedia. I've also got a Patreon, which is patreon.com forward slash Rootstem Gaming. And I do sell t-shirts at Teespring. And you just put a Rootstem Gaming into the search bar. Well, thanks very much for watching, guys. See you next time.